Welcome back to Grumpy Monkey Garage. Today we've got ourselves a 2005 Toyota Camry. Just needs a simple oil change. So let's go ahead and get started. Now that we've got our oil ready, you know it takes 5W30, it's going to take 5 quarts. You can go ahead and begin jacking it up by the front. And we'll put the jack stands on the jack point. Ready this time, Steve? I'll just jack it up and then get it later. Once we lift it in the air, we'll show you where we jacked it up from. I'm hoping almost day here, remember to set the e brake. Oh, we don't die. Yes, you did. Yeah. Always set the e brake when changing oil kits if you're lifting the front of the vehicle. Now when placing jack stands, not high enough, Dave. There's these little notches right here. I don't know if you can see on the camera. But... That's your jack point. That's where you want to put your jack and your jack stands. This little arrow on the corner panel lets you know where it is. So if you have a flat tire on the side of the road, this is how you would change it. So we're going to put our jack stands right there on the jack point for secure placement. Homeless Dave is gonna do the same on the other side. You put it up two notches. Yep. Good. Jack it up just a little bit more. There. Coming down. Now that the car is securely lifted and you're totally safe to work on it, you can crawl under the vehicle, locate the drain plug, and the oil filter. Okay, while under here, you'll see a pan over here. That's your transmission. Then over here is your oil. In the oil pan, there's the drain plug. The drain plug is in the back near the undercarriage. So this bolt in particular is a 14. Most of them will be, because that's just what Toyota does. You take the 14, make sure your ratchet's set to loosen, I believe it is, it is, and then just loosen it. Now it should be in there semi-tight, just not like it's been impacted on there. Once you get it loose, you should probably loosen it completely by hand. You should be wearing gloves for this, but I am not in... That's, make sure you catch all of it in the pan because oil is disgusting. That's what. Then that there is your, is your plug. I'm going to You're go a plug. <laughs> After you've drained the oil and it's at just a drip, before you take off the filter or add fluid, put the plug back in. If not, the fluid will just come straight out into the pan or onto the ground if you've already moved the pan. Start it by hand because you do not want to cross thread it or strip it out. Then after that, take your ratchet, set it to tighten, and tighten the bolt back on there, but not too tightly. After that, you, come, you have to come up into, into the front of the engine and you'll find your oil filter. Some of the time, it's too tight to get off and you'll have to take a tool like this to pull, the, to pull it off. But for me, my filter is not on there too tight, so I can just pull it off by hand. Make sure your pan is under the filter so that you catch the oil and it doesn't flood the garage or wherever you're working. Because your boss gets angry about that, right? Yes, yes he does. <laughs> There's the oil filter. Oh, no, I need a towel. And whenever you take your new oil filter, you want to take it, get some of the oil onto your finger, 
and rub it around the gasket. You want to move up the gasket so that it doesn't stick to your, well, to where the filter goes. Then it just goes right back up in there and squeeze on. And whenever you put it on, put it on tight, but not too tight, and don't use these to put it on. You could damage the filter or put it on too tightly. And that will give you a bad day because then you'll have to change it again and the, it may not filter properly. And there we go. And that's an oil change done here. After you've taken the oil out and the filter off, then you can add the oil. For this car in particular, it takes 5W30. Conventional, not synthetic. Okay, now on top of your engine, there will be a oil fill plug, but well, oil fill. You loosen it, which this one's being dick. You loosen it, take it off, take a filter because, or funnel, funnel, not a filter. <laughs> <laughs> And you, because you don't want to spill the oil all over your garage. We've never done that before. Yeah, haven't done that one before, have we? And just take off the cap to your oil. And dump it in very slowly. Because you do not want it to spill over. Now, I just added three quarts of oil. I'm going to check to make sure that I have not overfilled it. And the place to check it is here at the oil dipstick. Here's the oil dipstick on Camrys, and over here is the transmission. You don't want to mix the two up. That's old oil. Now, as you can see on there, maybe, you can see it's just barely at the bottom of my dipstick. That shows that it's on there, but it's still quart low. So I need to add one more quart of oil. Yep, right in the middle on the stick. And Perfecto. It's perfect for the oil change. I'm going to check one more time to make sure. Yep, and it's perfect. I also need to check if there's any leaks at the bottom, which I do not see any other than from the air conditioning water. And that's it. Now you take your funnel out and you clean it off so you don't store it on your shelf leaking all over the dang place. You know how that goes. And then uh, you put your oil fill cap back on. And now we'll show you how to reset the maintenance light inside the car. Alright, so now that you've changed the oil, what you need to do is you need to reset the maintenance light. You take your key, you turn it to on. Turn off all this ridiculousness. You push this, you can't have it on trip A or trip B, you have to have it on the odometer setting. And once you have it on the odometer setting, you're gonna hold that button. And you're gonna go off here. And the maintenance required light is gone. Let's see how it sounds with the new oil. Sounds happy. No more lights on the dash. Car seems good. I call this a successful oil change.